Triss could not help Geralt, yet she did direct him to Kareem Tilly, an oneromancer and an expert at finding the lost and the missing. Guided by Kareem Tilly, the Witcher had a dream. In it, Ciri and I, the Bard Dandelion, were reunited. Geralt now knew that to find Ciri, he would first need to find his dear old friend. Welcome back guys to another episode of The Witcher 3. I believe at the end of last episode I was just kind of in awe at how great Novograd as a city is and I still am. Uh, anyways, let's keep on moving here. We were visiting the girls that uh, Dandelion has dated in the past. Actually, you know like that um, story summary that I put in the beginning of my video sometimes whenever there's something new? I I'm still a little... I'm still a little, like, Those surprised that that voice is Dandelion's because we haven't heard Dandelion's real voice in the game just yet, but it's so different. I think it's mainly because uh, when he is voicing those kind of story summaries, uh, he's a lot older, so he sounds a lot more mature. Like, in, in The Witcher 3 and even... I mean, okay, his voice actor changed between The Witcher 2 and Witcher 3, but in both of, of those games, he's kind, he kind of sounds a little immature, like, educated, yes, but he's a little, like, um... I don't know, what's a good adjective to describe his voice? Like, hmm, perky almost, I don't know. But, uh, oh, there's another notice board here. Um, there's a lot of people talking as well. Just goes to show how, like, alive Novograd is as a city. So, um, yeah, as always, we'll check out these notice boards a little later when we're not uh, doing main quests. For now, we're going to keep on doing this one called Broken Flowers. So this one, I believe we're going to visit Molly, yes. So let's go. This baronet's love of Let's Villa. Shouldn't interest you. The baroness don't mingle with just anyone. Don't worry. I'm here to see your chambermaid, Molly. Out of the way. Baroness is right now. Be gone. Okay, so this is... Geralt of Rivia at my doorstep. Surely this is no chance encounter. Greetings, Baroness. Greetings, General. You're right. I'm here for a reason. There's no mistake in you. But for etiquette's sake, Mary Louisa Lavalette. An Imperial General and a Witcher meet. And know each other. Surprising. Okay, so a little bit of background story. I was going to say, this is one of the situations where our decisions towards the beginning of the game when we kind of we were uh, kind of simulating the Witcher 2 save file this is one of the places where um, that one of those decisions will matter it's really obscure but yes if you remember uh, one of the choices that General Voorhis this guy right here uh, asked us uh, in the castle of Azima he was like uh, what was the fate of the Lavalette guy I don't remember what he's called uh, Aryan Ar Aryan Ar I think it's Aryan. Yeah, Aryan Lavalette. Like, what happened to him? Uh, to be honest, I don't quite remember what I chose. It's been a long time. But uh, our two choices were he um, he escaped the castle after, after it was set fire. Uh, and the other choice was uh, we killed him. So if we killed him, actually Aryan is uh, this woman, this uh, Mary Lavalette's son. So if we killed him, she would be like really mad at us, you know, for doing that. If we let him live... Um, then she would be really pleasant to us. And plus, uh, in The Witcher 2, at the very beginning, we actually get to see this character, Mary Lavalette, and we get to rescue her from being tortured in one of the dungeons. So that was very in interesting. If you haven't played The Witcher 2, it's really, really worth a play. Um, if not, like then just watch some cutscenes about it. It gives you a really good backstory on The Witcher universe and um, very interesting events that happened between like the short stories and... Um, the Witcher 3. So let's just move the conversation along here. We did, in fact, meet, uh, meet Borges in Vizima. He gave us that interview. Yeah, we had an opportunity to uh, talk when the Emperor summoned me to Vizima. Had you run afoul of Var Emery's? No. You'd be long dead if that were so. It seems then that you share some interests. But I shan't question you out of doors. Will you accept my invitation? Tell me what brings you here. Looking for a girl named Molly. Heard she works here. My maidservant. I'm afraid she's currently at the home of my dear friend Patricia Vagelbud. 
Perhaps Geralt could accompany us. He could speak with Molly at the races. Is that something you'd consider, Witcher? Care to partake of some sophisticated diversion? Oh, is that what we're calling horse races nowadays? Uh, yes, of course. I'll be happy to do some sophisticated diversion. Well, if Molly will be there... On our way, then! Oh, man. General Borges. Quite a character, that guy is. Clearly not an Elfgardian spy. No, no, no. Or in the vo voice of Vorhis himself, he would probably say something like, A spy? I am not a spy. <laughs> no, I don't know. I actually don't really know what he does in the like the Nilfgaardian army. I think he's like the commander of the Alba division, uh, which is like this kind of... Um, uh, honestly, I'm not even completely sure. It's just, <laughs> when it comes to Nilfgaardian lore, I'm a little lost. We've arrived. My father owned a similar estate in Bruges. As a young girl, I'd travel there often to ride. Shall we look at the horses? Do you like horses, Geralt? I guess so. Called every horse I've had Roach. The Grey Mare is Cantarella, sired by Cahir, the champion from Vol. Grey's a nice color for horses, too. My coins on the Black Stallion, Nemrot, purest Nilfgaardian stock. Surprised he didn't salute you, General. <laughs> okay, so Cantarella. Written by Kahir. Okay, very cool. Actually, uh, the artwork for Kahir in this game, uh, in Gwent, of course, is he's riding a horse. So I wonder if that's the same horse. Wait, uh, was it Kahir? I think it was. We just got the card a couple episodes ago. I can't believe I forgot, forgot already. Anyways, tell me about these other horses. Know anything about the chestnut or the bay? The chestnut is Thunderbolt, a pure blood Ritanian, gallant steed, but too headstrong for my taste, difficult to control. And the bay hails from Zericania. Lord de Volta acquired him recently. I know little about him, though Zericanians are reputed to have incredible stamina. Okay, and what about this maid, Molly? Is Molly a horse? Pardon? I did come here to see Molly after all. Patience, Witcher. She ought to arrive soon. I asked Molly to join us as soon as she was done with her chores. She shouldn't be long now. All depends what you asked her to do, my lady. But I don't really have a choice. I'll wait. Okay, I wonder if she gave Molly a call on her cell phone. How the heck did she tell her to meet them here? I mean, isn't she at the Vagelbud residence? Seem to know your horses. No is not the word. Morvran's a true expert. I find them to be far more honest than men. Must say, I'm curious how you manage in the saddle, Witcher. Mostly just try to stay in it. What would you say to a little race? Not what I came here for. Don't make me beg, Witcher. Tell you what, win, and I shall give you my finest saddle. Made in Nilfgaard proper of beautifully tanned leather. Okay, that actually sounds pretty good. Let's race. Why not? Wouldn't mind seeing if your knowledge of horses translates into riding skills. Well said. So, which steed do you choose, Witcher? Okay, so they're gonna give me first choice. So we can get the the horse written by Kahir. We can uh, ride Nemrod, which is the Nilfgaardian breed, I think it was. There's the um, Redanian one, and there's the Zeracanian one. Um, I feel like Vorhis is gonna take the Nilfgaardian one, so let's just steal it out under him. The Black's your favorite? Let's see what a Nilfgaardian stallion's made of. I'll not race. However, I will wager on a winner. The Grey Mare's my choice. In that case, I shall try my luck on the Zeracanian Bay. I see no point in delaying this. Let's begin. Okay, Nemrod. You better do this race justice. If I were on Roach, this wouldn't be a problem. Actually, this wouldn't be too much of a problem either way, but... Horse races are a little, like, awkward and random, so... Uh, never know if I'll win or lose. I will try, though. 
Okay, so the most important thing of a horse race is obviously, I said last uh, the last time we did some races, is to stay on track. If I can stay on the track um, and not like veer off into a random direction because the minimap is a little awkward sometimes, uh, then I have a really good chance of winning. The only other thing I need to really worry about is a horse stamina, which I can actually just kind of gallop, um, canter a little bit to regenerate, and while I'm doing this, uh, the opposing racers actually wouldn't, mm, like, speed past me most of the time. So, that's just like an AI behavior to balance horse races, I suppose. Because I don't really think uh, AI horses have stamina bars for themselves. They kind of share your horse's stamina, if you know what I mean. Okay, well, that was simple enough. The horse what was actually thrill. pretty good. A beautiful victory! Thanks. For one for whom every horse is a roach, you carry yourself exquisitely in the saddle. My congratulations. That is yours. Calvary saddle, very nice. Now, could I talk to your chambermaid, milady? Ah, oh, yes, Molly. That is why you came here, after all. The portly young woman. That's her. Speak to her. And you must find us when you're ready to return to Novigrad. We'd be delighted to join you for the journey. Okay. Another freak. <clears throat> this poor his fellow. Lately. He's not half bad. I feel like uh, when he is doing his duties for Amir, he is like um, this really lying, scheming, say whatever he can to get the upper hand in a conversation kind of guy. But in these casual scenario situations. Uh, for his not a bad fellow. I'm Molly, my lord. Wish to see me? Call me Geralt. Geralt? That Geralt? The one Dandelions rescued time and time again? Hmm, yes. Dandelion has rescued Geralt hundreds of times. Uh, <laughs> no, but let's play along. Mm hmm. Wouldn't be here if not for Dandelion. Told me all about your adventures. How he'd ready you for battle with his songs. How he tamed the Cairn by playing his lute. I meant that literally. Dandelion's why I'm here. Came to ask you about him. Know where he might be? No. Sadly, I haven't got a clue. We've not seen each other in ages. The Baroness don't approve of our acquaintance. Says Dandelion's a good-for-nothing layabout. Can you imagine? But, <laughs> or maybe his sister could help you. Such a nice girl. Dandelion's sister? Well, that's a first. <laughs> you do realize Dandelion doesn't have a sister? Sure he does. Saw him himself. Funny, she don't look like him at all. Blonde, for starters. Maybe they've different fathers. Mm-hmm. Different mothers, too. Maybe. But you could see he cares for her. Looks after her. The way he carried her packages and... Know where I can find her, Dandelion's sister? I know. Whenever I ask Dandelion when we visit her, he'd grow all quiet and then change the subject. Uh-huh. And Molly clearly doesn't see any problems with that, right? Any chance you remember your last conversation with Dandelion? Of course. He came to borrow some coin for a barge. What? Why do you need a barge? To take me on a romantic cruise of the canals by the light of the moon. Said there'd be strawberries and that wine with the bubbles, and he'd sing me arias. But well, I've not seen him since. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks, Molly. Wait, before you go. I've got a request. Dandelion told me once he'd show me his etchings, but he never did. I'd so like to see him. Won't be too hard to convince him. He loves showing off those etchings to anyone he can. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks. And good luck to you on your search. All right. Well, didn't really learn much from her, but I think I'm ready to return to Novigrad now. As for where we are on the map, let's just take a quick look here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty far away. Although I could probably just 
um, fast travel from here, and this is actually the Vagal Bud residence. Hmm, interesting. So she wasn't really that far away anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at this Calvary Saddle that uh, Vorhes gave us. Is it any better than what we have? Um, oh, Jesus. How do I compare with what we have? Ah, oh, there we go. No, it's not. I'm just gonna sell that when I have a chance. Okay, so let's just walk around here and we'll tell Mary and Mavran that we're ready to leave. Ah, Geralt, there you are. Shall we return together? Okay, let's go. Gladly. It's a long way to Novigrad. Road ought to seem shorter with some company. I'd say the same. Well then, let's go. Very good. So that just leaves one more person that we need to talk to uh, amongst all the other people in Dandelion's little notebook. It's nighttime. Hmm. Might want to wait till morning though. Yeah, like Novograd looks pretty good at nighttime, but uh, I think it's most appropriate to visit people in the morning time. <laughs> That's just to keep me immersed. Like, it really doesn't have to be, but. And here we are. Thank you for your company. Likewise. See ya. Alright, Vorhis. See you next time. Actually, is there anything you'd like to say to me? Ah, Geralt! What can I do for you? Oh, how are things at the Imperial Court? Big changes afoot in the Empire. You've no notion? The Emperor summoned you. He only oh, okay. We've actually already heard this one. You know I'm this which... is back from like the but... very first time we talked to him uh, in like the Court of Azima. So oh, no. that's, yeah, that's nothing new. Anyways, let's go. Uh, what time is it? It's 10 p.m. All right. So I'm just going to sit in this little corner here. And we're going to meditate till the morning time. Yeah, look at that. Nice little shelter. <laughs> okay. One, four, six, seven. Oh, dude, it's raining. Really? Can we not have any rain? Can we just... Come on, stop raining. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's good. Sorry. I'm just a little paranoid <laughs> when it comes to rain and stuff. The rain just makes the day look like night and I don't and really enjoy that. Okay, well here we go. Um, Actually, before we go visit Rose of our Atra, which is our next uh, person that we need to talk to, there is a merchant over here. Let's go ahead and see if they have anything interesting to offer. For my wife, understood. Does the gentleman have anything specific in mind? Oh, I don't know. Give me whatever's most expensive. Oh, special occasion on its way. Anniversary, perhaps? That's the rub. It already came yesterday, and I forgot. Oh. Okay, so while this talisman buys whatever's Nobody most expensive, let's browse this guy's wares. Now. Looking doesn't cost a thing. There's plenty to behold. This is a collection of wonders that belong to the mage Eremas. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. How do you get a hold of these? Never heard of a mage willingly parting with his treasures? No one asked Eremas's will. He was burned at the stake a fortnight ago. Strange they didn't burn his stuff with him. Witch hunters let you resell it just like that? Why wouldn't they? These are common goods, some valuable only as collectibles, perhaps. So this is how they do it, right? They confiscate the mage's little magical trinkets, they sell it to commoners, and then they kind of um, convict the commoners uh, and uh, you know tell them that they have they're in possession of illegal goods, kill them by burning them at the pyre, and then resell the goods. I feel like that's kind of what the Redanians are doing. I don't know if it's entirely true. Like the game doesn't make any mention of a kind of just really ridiculously. Um, terrible scheme that the Redanians are doing, but I feel like that's something that they would do rather with the Witch Hunters. All right, I get it. These items aren't actually common. Rumor has it, each is an enchanted key. Rumor happened to mention where to find the locks these keys open? Sadly, no. What if I knew you could hardly expect me to sell them? Where did Eremus live? At a lovely residence south of Oxenford. 
Badly damaged now, as he made the hunters pay dearly for his skin. Show me what you have. Okay, so, um, first things first, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and sell this thing. I probably won't be able to get much higher price somewhere else. And this racing saddle, cavalry saddle, I'm going to sell that off. And that's probably it. We're doing pretty well on carry weight still, so, yeah. Uh, this elven crossbow, is that any good? Hmm. It does have some, like, additional traits, but it's not really that great. And he does sell these uh, little quest items, this lizard figurine, the jade figurine, and the old wine from Tucson. I don't know what this one is used for, but, like, the figurines, they are used for a certain side quest that we will probably take up a little later. Um, in fact, probably a lot later, who knows. And he's selling a book, The Curious Cases of Virtuous Vega. Let's just go ahead and buy this one. Who knows when that will appear, like, in the overworld. Uh, what else does he have? A potion of clearance, and some powders, saddlebags, yeah, yeah, nothing else that's like too interesting. Okay, and speaking of interesting, let's play some cards. <laughs> to matters less controversial, wouldn't mind playing a few rounds of Gwent. Okay, very good. Let's make this quick, guys. Opponent's leader cancels out my ability, oh no. <laughs> okay, it's okay. My leader's ability is not really even that great anyways. So yeah, Kahir right here, he is sitting on a horse. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's the same horse that they were describing in the horse races though. Anyway, so let's go ahead and look into this guy because he's terrible. And, oh man, I don't have any leader cards. I mean, um, hero cards. Let's just get rid of this thing. Okay, good, a spy. Alright, so he's got that dandelion. Well, I think I'm gonna start this off with some tempo. Play this Odim's Darkness. It's been a while since we've like uh, been able to play Gondra Odim and then just like summon these three shadows or darknesses all at once. And of course we get wrecked by a s Scorch. Oh well. Oh, he got a spy too. Yep, he is playing the Nilf Guardians, which means a deck full of spies. Makes sense. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, I, I do have this resurrection guy, so during the next round, if I win this one, I will be able to resurrect um, this Stefan Skellen. Oh my god, he's got three spies? Really? Well, I'm definitely not going to give up this round. Giving up this round right now will be suicide, so I'm just going to keep playing decoy um i think even still i think if i pass there is a very small chance that he will play and defeat me and it's a very very small chance because the the point gap is relatively large but i don't want to take any chances so i'm gonna keep playing i know what he's doing he's trying to bleed me in round one but bleeding in round one doesn't really work out a lot well so all right so now i have all the spies what are you gonna do oh yeah look at that Two hero cards. Hmm. Kind of forgot that we have Letho of Gullet in our decks. Alright, let's play another spy. This guy right here. Actually, let's give him this one. The weaker one. Nice. And there he goes, just playing out all his crap. And we play out all my spies. <laughs> oh yeah, who's got the card advantage now? In fact, it actually feels so good just like playing spies back to back. <laughs> Because you know there's nothing they can do in this round two. Look at that. He's 70 points ahead of me, but I'm not worried. I can play my carryover. <laughs> oh my goodness. Actually, this is a really good opportunity to play Letho. Look at this. That's 3 times 18. That's like 54 points. Plus Letho's 12 is 66 points. Oh my god, that's a 66 points swing from one play. It's so crazy. Oh no, it's 4 times 18. He's got that spy that's also 18. Wow. So that makes it an 82 point play? <laughs> oh shoot. That's going to be very interesting when I make this play. Yeah, I think if I, if I can actually win in this round, then I'm just going to do it. Because that is so deadly. Okay, I think I can do this because I also have Yennefer, which is a uh, 31 point play, <laughs> so... Oh, there you go. Scorch all those 18s. <laughs> 
pretty devastating. Oh no, he has Menno as well. Hmm, let's see. Can I still win this? I actually don't think so. Well, let's go ahead and just play this decoy. And he's gonna... Oh, he's gonna pass. Okay, let's see. Um, 31, 31, 40... No, nah, it's not enough. Oh, well. Gonna pass alongside him. And he only has two cards left. And I have a carryover, so... There's no way this dude is actually gonna win this. But his deck is pretty strong. <laughs> Had he won that first round, I would have been in really big trouble. But it pays to win round one no matter like how big of a disadvantage in cards, in cards you will have uh, going into round two. But I asked Triss about it. Okay, so do we get a statuette of men? Is that what Geralt was just saying there? Uh, quest items. Yeah, this thing right here, over here, Jade Figurine. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so the next time we meet Triss, uh, we will uh, ask her about that. And buying those little figurines unlocks this awesome quest called Of Darien Darkness. So uh, that's something we're going to do a little later. For now, we're going to go visit Rosa. someone promised not to dwell. <clears throat> okay, who's gonna be over here? And whosoever contributes to Would you want? Mmm. Oh man, okay, uh I'm the new cook. Well, I think one of the only ways we can actually get in through the front door is to say we're the new sword play instructor. I mean, I could say I'm looking for Rosa, but I doubt these guards will actually let me in. Just let like some like random witcher into their house <laughs> because I'm looking for her, so I say this. Rosa Varatra is expecting me. Supposed to give her lessons in swordplay. Come with me. Miss Rosa awaits. Yep. No ID checks. No, uh... Won't you realize what's what you your name? Into? Hope so, too. Miss Rosa's got a downright beastly temper. Shows no mercy once she grips a sword. Hmm. Okay. Oh, Grab look at this. One. And take care not to hurt the little miss. Follow me. Okay, got the sword, but before I go with this guy, I'm gonna take a look at what's in some of these bookshelves and stuff. Uh, you mind if I just... Ah, damn it, okay, I can't actually go in there. That's fine. Show me the way, kind sir. You're my new instructor. Well, well, Papa clearly went out of his way this time. Wood, to start with. I must know your worth. She's pretty confident. But something tells me that not she's not confident enough. Okay. No choice. Let's spar. I suppose I could loot to her on purpose. Um, I feel like uh, that's going to that scene is something that most people would not have seen. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and Why lose the Rosa on purpose. When you can barely handle one. Oh, she's actually pretty good. That three strike combo. I win. Congratulations. Is there not one competent instructor in this entire city? I'm not actually your swordplay instructor. Really? Then who are you? And how on earth did you get in? They didn't exactly check for my ID at the door, <laughs> so... I'm a witcher. I'm a witcher. I'm looking f A witcher? That's splendid. I always wanted to meet a witcher. This is so exciting. Hmm. Okay, well... <laughs> yes, very. I am looking for Dandelion. Incredibly. But we ought to discuss that another time. Came to ask about your rhetoric tutor, Dandelion. Rhetoric tutor? Good one. That is why Papa hired him, but not at all what the bard had in mind. He mostly played his lute and sang for us. I believe he thought he was wooing. Mean he wasn't? But you had some sort of relationship? If you call him chasing after me a relationship. Even so, there was nothing between us. Seems my sisters had a bit of fun at our expense. But enough chatter. 
Stand and fight. I demand a rematch. Really? Again? Ah, uh, well, should I let her win again? I don't know. Okay. You know what? Here. I'll throw the fight for you again, Rosa. Just for you. <laughs> I'll still parry something. Oh, did you see that? She totally dodged my uh, counter attack there. Which is fine. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Actually, uh... She definitely is a lot tougher on the uh, W3 W3EE mod than she is in the vanilla. <laughs> but still not that tough. I win. Here you go. Man, you really are a lousy swordsman. In fact, I believe I could teach you a thing or two. <laughs> okay, yeah, I would gladly take up some swordplay lessons from you. Not sure I can possibly pass up lessons from such a skilled young lady. What are you two lovebirds whispering about? You asked about my relationship with Dandelion? Well, here's the mix-up's mastermind. Edna Va'atra, the greatest mischief maker north or south of the Yoruga. Hmm, interesting. Dandelion got you two mixed up? Wait a minute. Mean to say Dandelion mixed you two up? On occasion, yes. But then Rosa would quickly set him straight. If you'd shut your catty mouth for a moment, dear little sister, I could explain. Edna sent Dandelion some love letters. She signed my name. Conceited as he is, naturally he fell for it. I was left to repel the aging bard's advances. Rosa, I had the best of intentions, you know that. I felt you needed help taking the first step. You blushed every time he sang a ballad. He'll next sing at your funeral if you don't stop it right now. <laughs> All right, well. Calm down, ladies. No poet's worth two sisters nipping at each other's throats. Especially not this one. Listen, I just want to know one thing. Either of you seen Dandelion lately? Edna might have. I certainly have not. My dear sister, I would never spend time alone with a man for whom you burn with a secret passion. Burn with passion? For one who incessantly praises another woman's talents? Afraid I've more sense than that. Oh man, these two do not get along, do they? Well, um... <laughs> Dandelion act any different lately? Notice anything strange? Strange? Not really. It's no use, Geralt. She's so enamored, she'd hardly notice if he turned into a werewolf. Edna, what? You needn't pretend he followed convention. Remember when he took us to the cemetery? Rhetoric lessons in a cemetery. Unusual even for Dandelion. We set out to visit the graves of celebrated Oxenford professors. He ended up quizzing us about Margrave Henkel. Who? Eccentric old coot. Died recently. He'd apparently been an important and generous patron of the arts as a young man. Hmm. Interesting. Getting some lessons of history here. Very nice. What about politics? That sophisticated young ladies like you know a bunch about politics. We've picked up a few things. What would you like to know? Oh, very interesting. Okay. Um, how is the war going? Actually, we've already asked this of Henry. That's uh, these two's father back in Vizima. <laughs> so let's see what they say about this war. Wonder how the war is going. Any outcome looming? Papa says much depends on Radovid, and on who captures Novigrad first. What's Novigrad got to do with it? Free city. Never taken sides. Always stayed out of conflicts. Oh, even children know Novigrad's home to the world's largest fleet. And they say the city's treasury's bursting with enough to equip two armies. Mm -hmm. That's about the gist of what Henry told us as well. And uh, the Emperor and his cohorts. Must be ecstatic. Emperor continuing to push north. Courtiers must be ecstatic. His confidants must be. But Papa says that's not likely to last much longer. Why not? Papa says the war is disrupting trade, and people are tired of financing the Emperor's adventures. Hmm. Okay, let's ask about something else then. Changing subjects. who Dandelion sing about? Know anything about her? I believe she's a poetess, or Trebaritz. Very skilled and exceptionally talented, of course. This woman. Not a local, right? Hmm. I seem to remember him praising her melodious Kaviri accent. 
Makes sense. He referred to her as Kalonetta a few times. Bizarre names are common in Kavir. Gotta ask Zoltan about this Kalonetta. Okay, well, it's nice meeting you girls. Time to go. Been a pleasure, but I've got stuff to take care of. Exceedingly nice to meet you. Please come again. Okay, get back into our gear here. And at this point, uh, we actually should be unlocking a new side quest. Let's see. Oh man, I am really injured here. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, hi. Okay, Swix. Hmm, okay. Well, oh, did that not happen? Interesting, hold on. Broken flowers. Uh, oh no, that actually doesn't happen? I didn't know this. <laughs> wow. Uh, so I feel like um, if we win against Rosa in that sword, uh, like that practice sword fighting there, um, we actually get a new side quest. And I thought that side quest unlocked either way. Uh, I guess I was wrong. Okay, Swix. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I really want to do that side quest because this I am trying to do as many things as possible in this uh, Witcher 3 playthrough. So. While we are still here, I think I'm going to make a quick edit here. I'm going to just go ahead and win against her in those swordplay, quote-unquote, lessons. And, uh, and then we'll see what happens after that. So uh, I will be right back. Okay, so this is what happens after I defeat her. I feel like um, we, uh, the game is just trying to tell us, like, you get to fight her twice. If you don't win either one of these times, you are just a horrible Witcher 3 player, so you don't deserve the side quest that she's going to offer. Um, so yeah, I actually didn't know this, because every single time I've played this quest, I've won against her both times. It's so easy, right? You actually have to, like, lose on purpose to actually lose. So she says, uh, fancy giving me a few private lessons. Um, we will say yes. Can't rightly refuse a request from a lady. What are you two lovebirds? And then Edna about? shows up again, so let's just skip ahead you here. Asked about my relationship? Okay, so here we go. Let's get dressed again. And let's see here. Oh, there's an extra person in here now. Whoa. Hey, butler. Sort of. <laughs> okay. Well, um, not really sure why that side quest is not unlocking. Um, this is my first time playing this mission on like uh, the Witcher 3 Enhanced Edition mod. It could be slightly different. I'm not really sure. Uh, in any case, it might actually happen a little later or maybe uh, it's a little glitchy. Who knows? But I've done all I can. Let's move on. Uh, oh yeah, I couldn't find these stairs. It's like really dark down here. Yeah, if we manage to actually like do that side quest later, that's fine, but if not, then uh, nothing really important happens there. It's just like we give her a couple more sword fighting lessons um, and uh, she we talk to her a little bit. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's not like there's any kind of romantic situation going on between Geralt and Rosa. So um, that quest is kind of a more of like a fun quest kind of thing. So now we discovered from the two of them that Dandelion used to uh, sing for a certain woman called Kalanetta. So now our next objective is to ask Zotan about this person. So consult with Zotan. Yes. Oh god, what's going on here? More of these bandits? Yep, okay. So these are horse men. Lost your nerve? Um, which I'm gonna just take care of real quick because they are causing a disturbance. Not on my watch. Die. Oh yeah. Hmm. Damn it! I thought there was an archer among these people. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that. So easy. Got some fruit, and not gonna loot the loot. <laughs> okay, I've got the milk though. Moving on. What will become of us under Radovid? Your bread, Don't your coin. So we're going back to the Rosemary in time. Uh, it's gonna be a while before we get to see Dandelion in person. So, uh, but oh, what the heck? Okay, <laughs> Butcher's Place. Okay, cool. So yeah, that that inn that uh, Dandelion inherited, or however the hell he got his hands on, uh, this place will kind of be kind of really run down for a while. 
uh, until we can actually find Dandelion and then he will uh, spruce this place up a little bit. So can I actually look at the sign here? Uh, no I cannot. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that just says Rosemary in time in whatever language that is. Elder speech probably. Haven't even drunk her water? Naughty bird. Now repeat. Save a ray crackers. <laughs> nice. Alright, Zoltan. Ah, you're back! You met Poppy? She want to start talking any day now. Okay, well. Oh, you. Uh, I was gonna say something about that. Okay, no, never mind. Never mind. Um, <laughs> where did you get this bird? That field marshal dude is replacement. The marshal was a parrot. You do remember, right? Where did you get her? At auction. Some mage's estate went under the hammer. Witch hunters and the eternal fire joined forces, staked out his place, and rounded the sorry sap up. Put his things up for sale. Happened to be passing by and saw this out. Came with her own cage. How could you resist? Could they? It weren't possible. Ah, but dandelions, what matters now. So, how'd you do? Learn much? Okay, I think I got something. Women on my list hadn't seen dandelion in a while. All claimed he had been acting strange. Also mentioned he'd been seeing someone else. Thing is, mystery woman wasn't on my list. What she supposedly like, this lass? Blonde, from Kovir. A Troberitz, apparently, named Kalanetta or something like that. Uh, that makes it clear as crystal. It's Priscilla. Aye. Must be her. Priscilla, okay. Uh, why wasn't she on the list? Why wasn't she on the list? Mm, this Priscilla wasn't like the others. I think Dandelion more than fancied her. I think it was fair for her. He lusts after every other woman he meets. How can I explain? Who does Dandelion love most? Himself. Exactly. And she's his mirror image. Hmm. Well, that's certainly interesting. What can I say? Could be he finally met his match. She's his match, all right. Maybe more. The laddie's head's on fire. Lassie's got him whirling. All right. Guess we gotta talk to her. Priscilla works for the Mummers Troop. Reynard and the Foxen. Never there in town, she performs nightly at the Kingfisher. Mean we've been sentenced to an evening of poetry? Must you always? This'll be true poetry, Geralt. You'll see. True poetry, huh? Okay. Well. Actually, on a very serious note, yes, Priscilla's song in this game is absolutely fantastic. If, if you've already played this game and heard it before, or you just heard it on YouTube somewhere, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good song. Mm, definitely gonna get flagged on YouTube for showing it, but I don't care. Okay, so, let's see, it's gonna go around here a little bit, see what I can loot. Got a couple of copies of the Wild Hunt here. And actually, is there anything else I can talk to Zoltan about? Zoltan? Get out! Mm, oh, yes! <laughs> That's so good. Um, let's talk to him about the pyres that were burning in the main square. Saw burning pyres when I arrived in Novigrad. Yes, Felicia Corey, a sorceress that was. The crowd came for the other one that day. And Doppler, crafty wee bugger who'd spent years masquerading as Chappelle. Commander of the Temple Guard. It was Caleb Menge who exposed him, executed him, and promptly took his post. Met that Doppler years ago, just after he'd assumed Chappelle's identity and form. Wasn't all that surprised when the Church of the Eternal Fire turned Toller into freaks, opened up a bit to magic and mages. Uh, well, that's all changed now. Every mage who came here seeking refuge is now caught in a trap. Hmm. Indeed. But what are you doing here, Zoltan? Novigrad doesn't seem like a safe place anymore. What's keeping you here? I was keen on starting my own enterprise, but nothing came of it. Nevertheless, I took on some debt. Got to pay it back now. I'd like to blame it on the war or human treachery, but the 
truth is, I've got my own thick skull to blame. Rather not dwell on it, Geralt, if you don't mind. Okay, that's not a problem, but now for the exciting part. Gwent. Round of Gwent? I never refuse. Of course you don't. Let's play. Let's play. Okay, very nice. Gonna keep on sticking with this Guardian deck. Actually, let's see. Do we have enough cards for a Squirtle deck? Uh, actually we do. Whoa. Although, at this point, I'm pretty sure our Squirtle deck is pretty mediocre. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, let me look at this, guys. I, I, have, <laughs> I have this one... Mo oh, actually, actually. I do have some copies of the Mahakaman Defenders. Hmm. Well, suppose we can give this a try. Oh god, it looks so bad. You know what? Let's let's do that a little bit later. What about the monster deck? Do we have enough cards for this? Nope, not even enough cards for the monster deck yet. Alright, let's just keep doing North Guardian then. We'll switch to another another deck uh, once we get some actual cards for it. So let's see what do we have. Oh, definitely want to mulligan this guy and probably one of these. Nice. It's actually a pretty decent hand. Okay, so he's starting with some carryover. That's Regis. And Regis is strong carryover. But then again, so is Ogeard. Um, I don't really care that he gets any carryover as long as I win this round one. So I'm just going to lay on some tempo on him and see if we can take this round. Oh, gosh. That's two pieces of carryover that he has now. Okay, well, I'll keep playing. Yeah, definitely can't let him win this round one. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. Okay, Vesemir. I still have got a commander's horn in my hand, so if things don't go well, then I can play this to get a lot of points. Uh, let's go ahead and play Menno. It's a solid 28 point play. Oh, with Vesemir, that's like 31 points. Alright, so he answers me with a very high tempo play as well. It's Ingram. Oh gosh. <laughs> Fighting for this round one, huh? Alright. Give you a commander's horn. Let's see how you like that. Yeah. I thought so. Okay, good. So he's got two pieces of carryover. 18 points, but it doesn't matter. I won the first round, which means I have total control of the game right now. Let's just play my hand out. However I can. Would have been helpful if I had a spy. But as long as he doesn't have a spy, this should be okay. Okay, let's play Ogeard. And uh, I'm gonna save Letho in my hand for next round. In fact, let me just take a look. What does he have in his hand? He's got an Ithne and a Vesemir. Okay, I feel like he's gonna play at least one of those cards if I play this. Or maybe he'll play both. Oh my god, yeah, that's so many points. Uh, does Lesso scorch everything? Okay, he does, which means that's 40 points there, plus 12 is 52, plus 6. Is that enough to win? I don't think so. And, nah, he's gonna keep playing. Which means, ha, joke's on him, because not only do I have carryover, I have a big hero in my hand, too. Alright, and that's that. Sorry, Zoltan. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. Seems I won. Give me your best card. Great fucking shock, given your frankly amateur deck. Here, take this card. You need it. You can do well to fix your collection. It's downright porous. Seriously? Did you bring in the shame a good dandelion for that? <laughs> you might skim something off your mate Roach. He's said to have good cards. That one. You think my deck is bad? Okay, well, it's not the best right now, but it's not bad. <laughs> what did he give me? Oh, he gave me an Icy. Okay, cool. That is for the Skoetau deck. Alright, so let's move on here. And uh, actually, Sundown is coming really quickly. And our next quest objective is to meet Zoltan at the Kingfisher, where we will meet Priscilla at Sundown. So let's just hurry over there and... Um, See if we can get a clue on Daniela. So, like, it's like this now, right? We 
uh, find Triss, who leads us to Kareen, who leads us to Dandelion, who leads us to... Well, and in order to find Dandelion, we need to go to Zotin, and then Priscilla, and then... <laughs> it's just like this huge link of people before we can actually get to our ultimate goal, which is going to be Siri. Yep, that is uh, the Novograd quest line in a nutshell. <laughs> Wild Goose Chase it is. Alright, so the Kingfisher is here. There's actually uh, this little hatch here that we can go underground. And I'm not really sure at what time we actually get to access this. Hmm, if at all. Yeah, my memory on some of the details of the game kind of failing me. Alright, here we go. Ah, here already. Come on, let's find some arse rests. Should start soon.
Oh man, this song gets me every single time. It's so good. I know him! Twas him murdered some Temerian boys back in White Orchard. Silence, woman. We've come to hear music. A murderer? Oh man. There's a war on. Some die. Oh please, argue this out elsewhere. Squabbles and rows again. And I was told this was a decent establishment. If I know Geralt, he risked his noggin to save someone else's ass. Save, you say? He murdered folk. Don't let him provoke you. There's the door. Settle this outside. Come. Actually, that woman that called me out. I wish to her right to there. Music. Music. She was actually the innkeeper at the at the, the tavern back in White Orchard. Fuck it is. Just realized. She's that exact person. Not very nice. Me to introduce uh, this year's Priscilla, known also as Caladetta, as lovely as she is talented, and this is Geralt of Rivia. I know. Dandelion's told me a great deal about you, and I've listened with bated breath. Don't be surprised. After all, doubt I could think of a more fitting subject for a ballad than a witch's love for a sorceress. Or should I say, sorceresses. Oh man, don't bring up that right now, please. Oh my god, how does she even know about it? Uh, of course, well, Dandelion, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think he left anything out. Seems Dandelion was meticulous in telling my story, down to personal and insignificant details. Did he offer anything about himself, like where he was going? <laughs> Splendid. Very funny, truly. So, see you later. Not here. Come with me. Ha. Ah, we're the secretive kind. There a reason for all this sneaking around? An excellent one. When last I saw Dandelion, he told me he was planning a heist. Siggy Reuven's vault? Shoot up. And I've not seen him since. Hmm, Reuven. Reuven, what's he like? Tall, fat, dangerous as hell. Limp in his gait, left leg. Sounds like a lame rock troll. If trolls were devilishly intelligent and had a flair for crime, yeah, I'd agree. Okay, so what is Dandelion doing breaking into vaults? Dandelion breaking into a vault. I'd sooner expect him to choose a life of celibacy. <laughs> <laughs> I got to pay for his way to pass the floor at once. I made awake the next three nights worrying about it. Any idea what got into him? He have debts he needed to pay off? Claimed he was helping someone. Urgent matter that couldn't wait, he said. This someone, Dandelion mentioned their name? No. But if I know Dandelion, it's her name he failed to mention. As he failed to mention her slender waist and ample bosom. Hmm. Well... Not sure if Dandelion would uh, talk about Siri that way, but sure. Let me guess. Attempted heist was a failure. Well, he's not driven up in a gilded carriage laden with jewels, so I should think so. I've asked after him everywhere, but it seems an army of tongue-stealing cats has overrun the city. I learned only that he raised a ruckus at Horson Jr.'s lair. Then Horson's men chased him all over town. Horson Jr. doesn't ring a bell. Biggest prick in Novigrad. Not literally, but... Got it. You're not a fan, but what did he do to you? Try the whole town. He's one of four bosses who control the city's underworld. The others being Siggy Reuven, Carlo the Cleaver Vares, and the King of Beggars. The rascal. At least he didn't cross the church as well. Bring that venerable institution into it. We'd be in deep then. Hmm, okay. So yeah, she just mentioned the four underworld kings of uh, Novograd. Carlos Vares is Cleaver's name. We actually haven't met him yet, but we've already been acquainted with um, Horse and Junior's henchmen, as well as the King of Beggars himself. In fact, uh, Priscilla's song was so good that the King of Beggars thought he would stop by to listen for like a brief second, which is which is interesting. I like that. I like that they. Uh, they, they showed him just walking by the door and um, just taking a look inside because it just shows that Priscilla Song really does um, do things to certain people. 
Um, so, yeah, we do have to rescue Dandelion again, and, uh, need to make sure that he's alive, obviously. Dad, hope Dandelion gets out of this alive. And in one piece. Know what they do to bards? Break their fingers, or tear out their tongues. Or both. Relax, I'll get him out of this. Gotta talk to this Horson first. And Siggy Reuven. Know where I might find them? I don't know about Horson, but Reuven runs a bathhouse. Careful, though. He's a dangerous character. So am I. Oh, yes. I don't doubt it. But Dandelion's not. I beg you to hurry. Let me know as soon as you learn anything. Okay, well, sounds good. I've got all to do here. Heading back to the Rosemary. Got Poppy to feed. And then I suppose I'll wait. See if our warbler don't come home on his own. Take care now. Okay, Zoltan. Good meeting you. Go feed that Poppy. <laughs> okay, so our next quest here is called Get Junior. Let's actually take a look at this room first. We got, oh, this is a nice poster. The Kingfisher Inn proudly invites you to nightly performances by Priscilla the Calanella. Guaranteed to tug every heartstring. Mm-hmm, indeed. And there's a note on her desk. Let's uh, do some little snooping here. Letter to Dandelion. Look at that. There's like this lipstick mark on the top. <laughs> Very interesting. My dearest Dandelion, since you told me of your plan to rob the king's sit, uh, the city's kings of crime, I kings of crime. Okay, I can think of nothing else. Several times I have wished to talk to you to drive this mad notion from your head, but you are never at the Rosemary in time when I visit. I hope the lesser evil is true and you are busy preparing for the heist and not avoiding me. I believe I want I want to believe that this entire matter is about something more than mere gold and midlife hunger for adventure. But either way, I would much prefer you abandoned it. Surely you can find another way to solve your old friend's problem. We both know quite a few folk in Novograd, many of whom owe us favors. Perhaps it's time to call them in? Think it over before you get in too deep. Oh, well, the dude is basically as deep as it gets. It's like in the Marianas Trench right now. But that's something we will actually discover a little later, so yeah. Let's go ahead and just loot some of these. We've been getting a lot of these Wild Hunt book books. Hmm. Looks like they printed a lot of surplus of these books here. Geralt! Okay, Priscilla, let's talk a little bit. Tell me, you and Dandelion, how'd you meet? At a poetry tourney in Ellender. Naturally, I'd already heard much about Master Dandelion. And it proved true. At first, I thought him a bloated, narcissistic buffoon. Just at first. Well, only cows don't change their minds. I changed mine when he came to congratulate me. Never expected he could lose so graciously. Dandelion can be irritating, I shan't deny it. Yet, I also know he can be fair and noble at times. Well, I very much doubt I could bear to have him around were it not so. I see. I get it. Hmm, okay, well. Take care now. That was a pretty short conversation. Uh, well then, so. We're gonna very quickly move on to the next stage of the main quest now. So I feel like, um. It's a good time to kind of take a break from all this main questing and do a little bit of, you know, side questing. We're gonna do some Witcher contracts, maybe. Um. Just. You know break up some of this, just like all of the story content. Although, really, to be honest, it hasn't been that much story. It's just a lot of walking around and talking to people. Yeah, that's basically it. Let's see. We did pick up a book in this episode, so I'm going to go ahead and just read this. It is a, uh, We are basically at the end here. And this book, it looks like um, it's a quest item for some reason. Let's just take a look. The Curious Cases of Virtuous Vega. Can there... Okay, this is definitely not a quest item. No. <laughs> I know what this book is, and it's not. <laughs> okay. Can there be such a thing as a virtuous whore? Vega asks himself this question each and every morning, and each morning swore she would prove to the world that practicing the world's oldest profession does not preclude virtue. This, this determination augmented not only to her own troubles, but also those of Gaspar de Brule, her mother's longtime friend, who as a personal favor had hired Vega to work in his establishment, the Golden Garter. Poor Gaspard had to listen to the consultant complaints of customers who would charge into his office in a huff about Vega's behavior, yet the girl clung firm to her principles and her ironclad drive to see them through. She would never perform with any light slit and would avert her gaze with pow a powerful blush upon catching sight of the male member. Gaspard's greatest headache, however, was the fact that Virtuous Vega never ever accepted any payment for her services. Oh. Hmm. 
doesn't just that just mean she's something else? <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, that's basically it. We're gonna end things off this time. Oh, actually, before we end things off, um, there's one thing I want to do. It's one other thing. I probably shouldn't have read that book first, <laughs> but um, this Kingfisher place. There is a innkeep here. And with an innkeep, there's going to be more Gwent play-in, so we're going to do this. Oh, oh, come on, Olivier. Kingfisher, where do you get the name? Master Dandelion's poetry. The Kingfisher preen, then fell in the latrine. Know it? Yeah, also know the one about Princess Annie, who drowned in the River Fanny. Uh, yes, at any rate, the Kingfisher welcomed poetry lovers with open arms. Some of the brightest stars in the literary firmament perform here. Okay, very nice. Oh, in fact, playing this guy is actually one of our quests, which is cool, but let's see what he has to what offer first. Uh, we got some Gwent cards. Oh, very nice. So these are Squaytail cards. I'm just going to go ahead and buy these all. And he doesn't really have anything else, right? I'm going to buy the pepper like I always do. Pepper is like one of the best foods in this game, I swear. Okay. And let's play some Gwent. Looking for a partner. Wouldn't mind a round of Gwent. Then you're in the right place, friend. If you'll play now, I'll stake the unique card from my collection. Very nice. Let's go. Sure. Let's play. Okay, no new cards. Let's begin. Opponent will go first. Oh, he's playing a monster's deck. I find monster decks the easiest to play against because, as I mentioned a couple episodes ago, they are a little underwhelming. So, um, yeah. Probably wouldn't put up too much of a fight, hopefully. Because what tends to happen is when they kind of uh, summon units like that, some of them just get summoned from the hand, and uh, when you summon a unit from the hand, it's kind of like playing two or more cards in the same turn, and that puts you at a really big disadvantage. I mean, the only time when you actually want to play multiple cards out of your hand at once is during round three, and even then, it's probably not a great idea. Um. Oh, well, damn, I wasn't really paying attention to how much tempo he generated. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and play this guy, catch up to him, win this round one, and uh, we'll see where to go from there. Okay, let's pass here. And I do have, like, plenty of spies, plus I have carryover, so I doubt this Olivier guy is actually going to beat me. I would say about 70% of an entire Gwent um, game just lies, uh, well, relies purely on you winning round one. Winning round one is just like so important. <laughs> okay, I'm not really sure why that uh, unit there didn't summon anything from my graveyard. Oh, that's not the summoning guy. Oh my god, of course. That is the really crappy plus one to off. Oh my god, yeah, that is an awful, awful unit. Gonna need to take this guy out as soon as I can. And why is this guy playing decoys? Can he really, really afford to play decoys? Well, there's a spy. Oh boy. Okay, maybe he can afford to <laughs> play some decoys. Well, if that's the case, hmm, what should I do here? Oh, man, this is actually kind of tricky. He played this Biting Frost, which is really annoying. Uh, man. Put me in a really tricky position here. <laughs> wow. The Biting Frost is really effective in this scenario. I think we're just going to look at his cards first, see what he plays, and um, go from there. Okay, he's going to play a ghoul. Oh my god, okay. Hmm. I think the only right move here is to pass. My Commander's Horn and the Gontro Dim is going to generate a lot of tempo, so... I'll just let him have this round. I can't really bleed him out any further. Even if he me if it means that he gets to play my spy there. Alright. Ericus Behemoth. Oh, that's actually a pretty strong play. Yeah, pretty good for like a regular card. Wraith, that's really nothing. I got Vesemir. Yeah, I don't think he's beating me. This, uh, this Gontra and Yennefer play very powerful. 
especially with my commander's horn. <laughs> yeah, check that out. And uh, Yennefer. And that's it. So, and just to rub some more salt in the wound, <laughs> let's just win even harder. Okay, there we go. You win. Card's yours. It's funny these people keep on wagering their best cards when Geralt is just like not wagering anything. <laughs> I doubt you not exactly a very fair arrangement if you ask me. Anyway, so we got Tiber Egebrecht in that win, which is amazing because this is a new Guardian card. Okay, let's just go into our Gwent deck here. Look at this guy. Eight strength and he acts as a commander's horn to the melee ro roll, which is pretty cool. And of course that means I get to take out this guy, which is absolutely trash. Where is he? Uh, is it this guy? No, it's not this guy. This guy, Siege Engineer. Yeah, that, that card is just absolutely awful. <laughs> Alright, so um, we're going to end things off this time. I think uh, next time we come back, we're going to put the main story on hold. We're going to do a couple of Witcher contracts. Um, read some of these notice boards. Yeah, these... Uh, how many notice boards are here in Velen, by the way? We got one, two, probably another one like up here somewhere. Oh, three, and maybe another one up there. Maybe four. I don't remember if there is one up there. This place is Temple Isle, by the way. Uh, not really much, not much happens in the story uh, on this entire island in Novograd, which is kind of a shame. I think I mentioned that like some time before. And uh, yeah, look at all these side quests we already have. So, oh, okay, this is all just, that's okay. This is all just like moving to Skellige, which is okay. Um, oh my god, look at that, guys. We have exactly 5,000 crowns. That's so cool. <laughs> I didn't even try to get this number. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Okay, so uh, we're done for this time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Cheers. We we'll get a bonus for working in piss poor weather. Temple Garden. Blood came out of the city. <laughs> okay.